Good afternoon, good morning, whenever you're viewing this. I'm Rashawn Peak, Mentor Coordinator for Empowerment. Today's uh, conversation will be with some ladies from Johnson C. Smith about the eSports trifecta team. I am going to turn it over first to Dr. Lawson Williams, who will introduce herself and tell us a little bit about the program. Absolutely, I'm so pleased to be able to speak to you today, ladies. We know that you're doing phenomenal things and that you're going to continue to emerge as leaders in our future. And so we're so proud of you and happy to join you virtually today. I am Dr. Lawson Williams. I am a full tenured professor of sport management at Johnson C. Smith University, as well as the founder and advisor of our esports and gaming trifecta, the first at an HBCU. Let me say that again, the first at an HBCU. Yes, <laughs> oh, hi, golden blue. <laughs> and so basically our esports and gaming trifecta uh, consists of three elements. Uh, we look at the academic program. So we have the first academic program in esports and gaming management. And so for students who are interested in attending JCSU, it's a minor program that consists of 21 credit hours. For individuals who just would love to learn a little bit more about the esports and gaming industry, they can actually enroll in our certificate program. We also have a state-of-the-art esports lab on campus that's located in the New Science Center, as well as clubs. Uh, we have a game development club, as well as a very competitive and successful esports club that literally from inception to playoffs, we took it all the way there in, in literally six months. And so we're so proud to boast our participation in uh, five esports titles, including Call of Duty, uh, Rocket League, NBA 2K, Madden, um, and as a matter of fact, we're, we're seeking diversity in the club, so it's very important for us to talk to you today because we want to make sure that our gamer girls are on board. I was a gamer girl back in the day. Uh, Pac-Man, Asteroid, Donkey Kong were my <laughs> favorites, and I tell you, I was the best in the neighborhood in some of my uh, <laughs> at least of my household, I'll say that. <laughs> So I'm going to pass the torch on to our current student, and then she'll pass the torch on to our JCSU alum. So we have Coach Kizzy joining us today. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here, and thank you for the opportunity um, to share my experience. I am very new in the world of esports, and um, I may be uh, like you, and you're trying to determine what is esports. Um, it, that's when I learned that I am actually a gamer. I'm sorry, my, my battery just, I'm sorry, I know recorded. Okay, let's put that in. So I am um, just discovering that I am actually a gamer. Um, and I didn't realize that growing up. Like uh, Dr. Lawson just mentioned, one of my favorite games was Miss Pac-Man. Um, but I wasn't a competitor, so I never considered myself to be a gamer. But now that I'm a student at Johnson C. Smith, I've been exposed to the world of esports and I'm so excited. I'm even more excited to know that there are females who are dominating in this industry. So go girls, girl power all the way. Um, and I think that's what makes me even more excited to know that there are career opportunities after school. So it's not just uh, games anymore. It's just not playing around. Now you have an opportunity to actually build a foundation. You have, an op you have other options um, if you want to get on a business side of it, which is what I'm interested in. Learning uh, the marketing side of esports, learning um, the event planning side of esports um, so that I can incorporate what I'm already doing in my professional life with pack my hobbies and passions and transition into a new career. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm grateful to Johnson C. Smith for this new program. Um, the options that it offers, uh, the certificate program Dr. Lawson just mentioned, or if you decide to uh, matriculate and uh, enroll as a minor, that's awesome that you have that flexibility. Um, other schools may not. So Johnson C. Smith, we are number one for a reason <laughs> and you're in the right place researching and learning the industry um, and fi figuring out how you can be a part of it. And we need you, so come on aboard. That's right, love it. And I'm new to this, so I don't really have much to say besides <laughs> we need to be in esports. It is so much fun. So I have to pass it on to our alumna now because she's more experienced and yeah. she's gonna help us to get even more excited. Right. <laughs> how y'all doing? Uh, can y'all hear me? Yes, yes. ma'am. 
Okay, okay. Um, my name is Ariant. Um, I graduated from Smith back in 2014. Um, my gamer tag is Ari on the sticks right now. Um, and when I say I've been a gamer all my life, that was me. Um, elementary school, high school. I started with the PlayStation. Went from a PlayStation to the GameCube to the Wii. Um, and now I got Xbox. Um, I am a gamer slash content creator right now. So mm-hmm. like everything I do um, is basically on my Instagram. Um, I'm about to get into streaming. And when I say the community is amazing, yeah. like it, it's amazing. I feel so blessed and just appreciative of all the black women. Let me just say that all the black yes. women that have come together, um, whether it be on Instagram, Twitch, there's so many collectives and so many groups where if you don't feel comfortable being by yourself, you can find a group of people that play the exact same game you play and y'all can just play together and create, you know, relationships. It's really pretty. It is. It's a beautiful thing right now. So shout out to JCSU for this. Y'all had this when I was in school. Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. Like the whole the gaming lounge that y'all have, I'm mm-hmm. excited for y'all to even have that. Mm-hmm. So if this is something that you want to do, I'm letting you know right now, don't be afraid. Uh, when I was growing up gaming for me, I was a little kind of, you know, I couldn't really talk about it with everybody that was around me because I was the only one in my group that was really a gamer. I'm a big nerd, anime, all that stuff. So being an adult and me and all these other adults that used to love it and, you know, we can express our love now. It's great. So if you can hop on board, hop on board, please. <laughs> That's, that is fabulous. I'm so hyped. So tell me more about how um, a 12th grader, 11th grader can get involved in their certificate program. Like, what's the process? Okay. And so actually, um, it may be a better fit for our 12th graders to get involved with a minor program. And so that would really essentially just mean uh, applying to JCSU, www.jcsu.edu, applying. Of course, you will need to select at least an intended major. And virtually every major connects well with esports and gaming. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the career opportunities that are available to you in the esports and gaming ecosystem. But if you apply to JCSU, select a major, and let's just say you select business administration, then you can also select a minor select esports and gaming management as your minor program. And so we're always excited to talk about the the three C's. And those three C's for us really have to do with club. So if you're really a gamer already or you're interested in esports, if you play, then you can join our esports club. If you're interested in more of the technical game development side, then you can join our game development club. Or you can be like some students and be in both clubs. (laughs) And so it doesn't mean that you just necessarily want to go into those particular areas as your career, but for some students, they really enjoy the social interaction with their the members of those particular clubs. So from clubs to classes, again, our, our minor program in esports and gaming actually deals with seven core classes and five of those classes are specialized in esports and gaming. So from now clubs to classes to careers. So we actually have developed a pipeline in partnership with a number of global esports uh, companies, including Riot Games, which if you heard of League of Legends or Valorant, some of our most popular esports globally, um, you, you have really identified and connected with some of the industry's best. And so we've actually, through partnerships, developed five internships. Our students will rec- literally be starting on next week working with Riot Games. And these positions as interns, they are very well paid. In addition to stipends that they receive, If it hadn't been for the pandemic, they would actually be headed to L.A. next week, literally. So, you know, again, it's just a partnership that we created and reaching out to, as Arianne talked about, some of the uh, communities, making sure that we are connected, making sure that our girls and our guys are exposed to opportunities that many of the other schools are looking into. But I have to say, I have to boast that they aren't quite there (laughs) from inception last year, February of our program to where we are now is really just amazing. Uh, And and I always have to give God the praise for giving me the kind of passion that I'm able to exhibit and really helping to launch a lot of the programs. We're the first HBCU to enter into official endorsement deals with an official jersey provider. 
uh, and actually Point 3 is located out of Atlanta. They're actually offering our students internships as well. We also have a gaming eyewear uh, provider, CED Collection, which is a black owned eyewear company based out of Dallas, Texas. And so they are our official gaming eyewear provider. So from head to toe, literally, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are representing the gold and blue. And so if I had permission to share my screen, I would love to share with you all uh, some uh, career opportunities. And you're looking at whether it's graphic art, you know, individuals who will literally be designing the characters that are involved in these esports and games, you know, it, it, the opportunities are unlimited. Public relations, communications, art. You know, I'm just so excited when I think about where you all could be in terms of the future. Are you all able to see my screen? Let me know when you are. Not yet. <clears throat> okay. Hopefully we'll be showing up for you soon. There it is. Okay. So I'm just gonna keep the slide right here. Look at all of these career opportunities. And again, this is just literally uh, a few of the opportunities in comparison to really what's out there. Esports is a microcosm of society. And so when we think of it that way, we think of every other opportunity that would be available in any other type of industry as available in esports and gaming. The difference is if you are a gamer or someone who is intrigued by games or esports, then naturally, as, as Ariad said, she's been in this world since she was little. And so now to see the kinds of careers that, that you have the opportunity to engage in when this is something you naturally are passionate about is just amazing. So you literally are doing what it is you love to do. And, and I think that's what we always say, find your passion. So if your passion is in gaming, now you can find your passion through employment in gaming. And so just looking at some of these, so if you're more on the STEM side, of course, STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, math. And of course, we also talk about STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, then you can see the opportunities available to you through engineering manager, senior product analyst. And so many of these really require you to have an understanding, to possess an understanding or interest in esports and gaming, because you're looking at and helping to develop some of these latest esports and gaming content areas. So either if it's a product, the actual esport itself, or if it's just an aspect of that product, then the opportunities are unlimited, even communications and public relations. So not just designing the game, but you know, writing the storylines for the game. And so we're just so excited that through this program and through our esports and gaming trifecta, we're really able to put students who are passionate about these areas. And even if you're not a gamer, if you're just intrigued by the ecosystem, you are able to get involved as well and, and really able to share and develop your talents at the same time. And so, you know, again, I just wanted to show this to you guys, talent acquisition. So you literally have individuals who are going out to find talent, individuals who may want to become professional gamers, you know, so finding that talent, scouting, it's really essentially what we would call it in traditional sports. And so it's the same thing where you would even have an opportunity to, to be an agent for a professional gamer. And so, uh, you know, again, just innumerable opportunities. I uh, just wanted to share a few highlights and superlatives regarding our program. Um, we were, again, we've been the first in this space for, for many endeavors, but we were also the first HBCU to co-produce the first ever eSports and Gaming Career Conference and Expo. And, and it was co-produced, it was held virtually for our uh, spectators, but I actually had the opportunity to travel to Tampa to see the co-production occur in person. And so that was a lot of fun. It was held uh, this past February during Super Bowl weekend. Again, I talked a little bit about our partnerships. We're also excited to have been uh, in televised segments on NBC as well as CBS. And we're actually working on a segment now that will probably air uh, within the next few months that will be on ABC, okay? And again, aside from the, being the first and making sure that our students have opportunities through uh, internship programs with Riot Games, we also have Checkpoint XP, which is also known as Beasley Esports, as well as the Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation Department. They've reached out to us. The Charlotte Mecklenburg Library has reached out to us. So a lot of our community agencies have basically recognized us to be the first and, and very successful in this space. 
You can be the first, but not be successful, but we're the first and we're thriving. And so we're just so ecstatic to actually engage with our community leaders and that they recognize our program. And so, you know, again, just with regards to the curriculum itself, for those of you who are truly interested, again, you'll have to actually select a major at Johnson C. Smith, but the minor program consists of five specialized esports courses. And we're excited to announce that we will actually have our first graduates within the next semester or so. So they would have completed all of the coursework involved, all 21 credit hours. And so there will be our inaugural class graduating uh, next May, May of uh, 2022. The certificate program is actually essential comprised in the esports and gaming management program. So it's just 12 credit hours. So that would essentially be four three credit hour courses. Here's our esports lab. We actually have done an upgrade uh, with regards to our monitors. We now have a new 27 inch curve monitors. And so we're excited, but this was actually the first picture that we took of our lab when it launched uh, actually last year. And so it's now been, like I said, featured on NBC as well as CBS segments, specifically announcing it as the first HBCU eSports lab. And we do know in years, we will probably outgrow this space. I've already talked to some of our IT specialists on campus and they're already trying to work to identify another space that will be able to hold more students as well as uh, possible tournaments on campus. And so we know that's gonna be coming very soon. Uh, this was our eSports club that we talked a little bit about. Again, NBA 2K, Fortnite, Madden, Call of Duty, Rocket League are just the five eSports titles that we compete in now, but we're looking forward to expanding. And so we would love to have our new members join the club uh, and, and bring some new eSports titles. We're looking forward to expanding them, even looking at, um, Esports that might be more enticing to our gamer girls. And so, uh, you know, I know I reached out to Ariane about that before because we want to expand, but we definitely want to diversify our esports club. So we'd love to have some of you join us. Um, our esports club, like I said, came in from inception to playoffs in six months. They are not taking, you know, <laughs> any anybody, you know, in terms of playing them will understand that, you know, they are serious about the business. And so we've literally defeated defeated some big names, including uh, Clemson University, uh, just to name a few, UNCC right here in Charlotte, right down the road. And so it's really just oh, been the, the highlight <laughs> of many of our student athletes has been defeating, you know, these large name schools who in traditional sports, Johnson C. Smith probably would have never played just because we're division two. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, these schools are actually division one. And so Virginia Tech, uh, you know, whether it's uh, Virginia Commonwealth University, you know, in defeating them, our, it, it just brought an extra smile to, to our gamers' uh, mouths, really, uh, and, and to us as well. I know many of you follow me on LinkedIn, and you know I'm quick to blast it out, <laughs> pictures and everything. And so it's been amazing just walk, watching these uh, young people develop as a club, the team cohesion, you know, the cooperative skills that have been built, which we know these are soft skills that are imperative in our workforce. And so we're help, you know, happy to you know, help them to develop and, and hone those skills. And this is what I spoke about the game development club is just the space in a club that helps students who are passionate about game development and game design come together, share, talk, and actually engage with, you know, helping to design some of our esports uh, content as well as developing esports games. And I know that high on their priority for the next school year is actually developing the game. So they've been great at hosting events, uh, and, but I, I know this now they're ready to take it seriously in terms of the true mission of the club. And so this is just my contact information for those of you who would love to reach out uh, to me, uh, you may do that via email, blwilliams at jcsu.edu. And I'd love to chat with you. I really would. All right, I'm going to stop share now. And uh, if there is any other content you would like for us to speak about, the rest of my team, if you all have any additional information you'd like to share. What, what can the community do to one, support and to help get the word out? About our program? Mm -hmm. 
yes, I think part of it is just, you know, really disseminating the information. I was excited to actually be in Dollar Tree the other day and I had on this same exact shirt <laughs> and the cashier said, I'm going there. And so I was like, oh, you're coming to Dr. C. Smith? He's like, yeah. And I said, well, here's my card, you know, follow up with me and I'll walk you through the process. A week passes by and I hadn't heard from him. So I was like, okay, we're back in Dollar Tree now, this time with my kid. And I see him again. I go specifically to his register because I want to be able to rehash the fact that I hadn't heard from him. So I said, hey, I said, we talked the last time I came in. He said, oh, really? I said, Johnson C. Smith, you were talking about you wanted to apply. And he said, oh, yeah. He said, well, my mom was talking about I should be going to CPCC. He said, but I really want to go there for esports and gaming. Oh, my goodness. I was like, you want to go there specifically for esports and gaming? He's like, yeah. I said, well, I'm the person you need to talk to. So <laughs> I was just, so that shows me that the word is getting out, but we appreciate any type of, you know, positive publicity and exposure that we can get. And so, of course, you know, the TV segments, televised segments, as well as, you know, we've been uh, featured on the radio podcast as well. Uh, that's always helpful, but word of mouth is imperative in this process. And so we would appreciate that. How do, we the how do we change the narrative when it comes to parents thinking that you're just playing games? Oh, I love that uh, question. Uh, the narrative is uh, has already changed parents. Uh, yeah. I am a gamer mom and I'm, I'm a gamer mom of twin sons who are 11 who've been gaming since they were four or five. I got on board and that was actually part of the impetus for me developing this program when I realized they were so engaged and it was really to me one of the ways, truth be told, to, to get tasks completed around the household. You know, this really became my selling point. If we want to go here, we need to get this done. If you want to play this, we need to get, and boy, it was getting done. I was like, oh, I love this. And so just that connectivity, the fact that they were so passionate and not obsessed because we don't want them to get to that level, but definitely, you know, very much um, enthralled with esports and gaming. It was second nature to them. And so they would pick up those remotes with 50 different buttons. <laughs> and, you know, compared to the one I was playing with back when Atari came out with the one stick and the red button, I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, just from the benefits, I think the focus has to be on the benefits of engaging in esports and gaming. And we really have seen a lot of healthy uh, social interaction. I think you hear a lot of adults talk about the pandemic and maybe the negative sides of not being, being able to interact and engage. But guess where the kids were? They were interacting and engaging. They talked to their cousin on Xbox while they were playing. He's down in Florida. They were talking to, you know, their yeah. god brothers, you know. So, you know, through esports and gaming, we found really a whole nother world of social interaction and social gaming. And it's global. It's not just talking to the person, you know, they're keeping in contact with friends who they hadn't seen since last year through gaming on Xbox. And I know the same is, you know, the case for, for PlayStation as well. And so keeping in mind those kinds of benefits, you know, from the standpoint of, you know, it's fine motor skills that they're engaging when they're using their, their hands and emotions, but increased dexterity, you know, eye-hand coordination, you know, all of that really comes into play when you're talking about gaming. And so aside from that, the career opportunities, parents, when you hear about the career opportunities, that's the whole point of sending your child to college. You want to enhance their opportunities for career success. Well, we're already, you know, having from a standpoint of that being outlined already, we've developed that pipeline from club to career. So it's not just students coming in and participating in the club. We have the classes and the, the classes are providing them with the content and esports and gaming that will prepare them for the career. So the contacts are already developed. It's just a matter of the students getting there and we're going to, you know, pull them through the process and ensure that they are ready for success. And I agree with that. I, um, I am a parent of an 11 year old, a girl, I have a girl, um, and it has allowed me to bond with her um, as well as my husband. And this, uh, they enjoy gaming. This is, this is something that they do together, but now I feel a part of it. Um, and as a parent, uh, what, what piqued my interest, as I mentioned earlier, was the career opportunities that are now available. But it's really that bonding experience and an opportunity to network. So um, that's what Johnson C. Smith has offered to me, just 
conversing with Dr. Lawson about something totally different and <laughs> hearing her passion, as you all can tell, you know, just hear from her, you know, today's uh, panel, she's very passionate about this and it is inspiring and to know the facts, it, it encouraged me to actually do the research. And when I learned that the women, the percentage of women that are gamers are so high, that's when I realized that I really am a gamer. I don't claim the title, you know, it may not be something that I, you know, I did as a hobby as a kid, but I enjoyed gaming and um, I'm competitive. So when my husband's playing and my daughter's playing, now I just jump in there and I understand it. And I no longer look at it as just a, a waste of time. Oh, you're mm -hmm. just sitting around playing. No, you're playing, but you're actually building a skill set. You are doing something that you really enjoy that could uh, offer up an opportunity in the future you know, for, for you. Um, and the lifestyle, it's so relaxed, you know? Um, COVID has taught us that change is imperative and we have to be open to it. And e-gaming and the esports industry is a billion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. So between the career opportunities and the bonding experiences, mm -hmm. we could be a, a kid again. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And Johnson C. Smith just opens up um, that opportunity with the courses that they offer, uh, the internships. Like I'm benefiting now. I'm very new in the industry, but I'm learning so much and I'm gaining the opportunity to meet people in the industry who actually don't know as much and they look to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I'm new in this, but because I had that experience, because I'm linked to people like Dr. Lawson, because of John C. Smith, I have the confidence to go out there and speak about esports as if I've been in it since I was a child. Mm -hmm. Well, Thank you me. have been in it since you were a child. <laughs> Technically, yes. <laughs> I'm just not. So you say I have to continue to, to, to tell myself that, yes, I am a gamer. Yeah. And you are too. <laughs> right. Absolutely. I claim it. <laughs> Arians. Can you close us out with what you would tell yourself growing up? Um, our girls are from sixth to 12th grade and I would um, hope that your voice because you're um, of the younger generation can inspire them to get over any of the setbacks that they might have in being a gamer. Um, I just say, keep doing it no matter what people say. Like I was saying earlier, you know, when I was growing up and back in the day, the kids and the boys that loved gaming and all the nerdy stuff, they were like huge nerds. So they'd come to school with their Pokemon cards and their decks and those big old books. I had Pokemon cards, but I didn't have those big old books. <laughs> so, you know, it was kind of uncomfortable wanting to talk about it with people that knew about it. So I just, it, it was always something that I love to do. It, was, it always brought me joy, you know, going home. And it still brings me joy because it's just a peaceful thing. So if you love it, don't listen to what nobody has to say about it. You, you, you're a girl, you play like a girl. I can kill you. I can win that game though. <laughs> so don't, don't listen to the haters. Don't, don't let them get you down. Continue to do it because you love doing it. And you'll, you'll eventually prosper because of it. Um, how y'all were saying earlier, um, how do I get our parents, you know, to not think of it as just gaming. The YouTubers that game and have been gaming for about 10 years, they make up a surplus amount of money just from doing it. And it's, you know, they put a lot of effort into it. They put a lot of time into it, but there is, you know, gratuitous results from, from doing what you love. So always, always keep that passion. Don't let nobody get you down. Don't let Nobody say, you know, whatever they have to say because you're you're um, a woman or if you, you know, are a black woman. So we already got, you know, it's already hard in life anyway. So when I'm gaming and I'm trying to stay in my peace and I have to deal with that, I just I just let it go. I don't even focus on it because I enjoy my game so much. And I know at the end of the day, I'm going to be the best one, whether I'm a girl or not. So <laughs> That's right. Can't wait to get you down. Any final comments, ladies? Just keep being excellent. Always focus on the positive. Uh, right now, you're in the process of purposeful preparation. You're preparing for success. You're preparing for grace, greatness. Uh, keep that momentum going. You know, don't pay attention. Don't look to the right or to the left to people who are being negative. Stay focused on forward motion. And I would encourage um, all to be open to um, 
to learning different things. It's okay if you don't know what you want to do right now. Mm -hmm. This is what college life is for, for you to explore, to try to figure out. You may enter college thinking you want to be an accountant or a doctor, but that may change along the way with your experiences. So I encourage you to be open-minded and to um, engage in social activities and learn more about the different, um, not just esports, but different programs on within your campus um, to help you to find your way. Find your community too. Um, I have like my regular Instagram, but then I have my gaming Instagram. And I've met so many awesome people just because we all love the same thing. And it helps like if you're nervous or like you don't really know how to talk about what you love. If you just find a community, it's it's a beautiful thing. Yes. Well, we look forward to seeing you all at JCSU. Uh, I look forward to meeting you. Yes. And we look forward to guiding you along the, the path of success, whatever that may be. Remind us again how to get in contact with you. Yes. Uh, Dr. Lawson Williams, my email is dlwilliams at jcsu.edu. I'm on LinkedIn as uh, Dr. Lawson Williams. And I am on Twitter as well as Instagram as Dr. BLW number 32. And do you other ladies have social media you want to share before we close up? Yes, I'm on social media as Miss Coach Kizzy. Um, that's all platforms. And on LinkedIn as Kizzy Samuel hyphen Parsons. And I'm everything esports and double dutch. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. <laughs> That's another topic. <laughs> that is a different, that is a different only academy. All right. You have one more, Ari. Oh, uh, well, it I'm a little my my social media is a little uh yeah. open. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> I like it though. It it's vivacious all day. <laughs> well, if you can handle it, you can find her. She mentioned it in the beginning of the segment. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Rashawn <laughs> Peak. You have been joining uh, the first ever HBCU Gamer Sports Management Trifecta. I'm so excited um, to watch this program grow um, and can say I was here in the beginning. Yes. Looking forward That's right. to sponsorships <laughs> and internship connections. That's right. Um, you can find us online at Empower Hermit, H E M P O W H E R M E T, Inc., on any of their social media outlets. Again, I'm Rashawn Peak, and you have been joined um, by the dynamic women in esports. Thanks. Be soon. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Be safe. Bye bye. bye.